Hello everybody, thank you for joining me today. We're going to talk a little bit about programming the IntelliPro for the 2.0 subscribers. This is the 7794A, which allows you to connect the subscriber to your fire alarm panel dialer. So here's an example of our 7794A. Couple things to note, this is the exact same card as our 7794, which is the IntelliPro for our legacy models. So you will still see where it says handheld in the top left hand corner. You cannot program this card with the handheld programmer. You need to install it in a subscriber and then log in to the subscriber in order to do the programming for the IntelliPro. Another important point is that anytime the IntelliPro can be used as a primary communication method, the subscriber must be mounted within 20 feet of conduit and in the same room as the fire alarm control panel DACT. The IntelliPro needs to hear three valid touchtone digits to pick up. The IntelliPro by default is programmed with three fives. Additionally, the IntelliPro does not care what those digits are as long as there's no POTS line connected to the RJ31X jack. Set the DAC to CID format, AES's preferred format. Set the DAC to touch tone or DTMF dialing. And note the IntelliPro will never answer a rotary dialed number from the DAC. There are a couple of different options when connecting the DAC to the IntelliPro. You can use the screw terminals and wire them in parallel as it shows here. If you can disable dialer 2, you can also just run dialer 1 directly to the screw terminals. You can also plug in one dialer to the AP jack and then one dialer into the screw terminals as well. We just want to make sure that you do not use the RJ31X jack, J3, as listed here. The RJ31X jack, or J3, is for a POTS line that's connected directly to the telephone company and will provide an alternate path for the IntelliPro to communicate with your central station. All right, let's walk through programming the IntelliPro. First thing we're going to do is we're going to log into the subscriber, and please feel free to visit one of our other videos about how to log in to an AES subscriber. Go ahead and select login and then what we'll do is go to accessories and then scroll all the way to the bottom. Now you'll see the IntelliPro is not appearing here under the accessories tab. The first thing we need to do is go to the status screen and allow the hardware changes. So I'll go back to the status screen and then you need to scroll all the way to the bottom of the screen. You'll see here under panel interface it says detected IntelliPro and we have to accept the hardware changes so we'll tap on accept. After we hit accept, we need to go to the top of the screen, hit update to send these changes to the radio. Now when we go back to the accessories tab, we'll see the IntelliPro menu is available. Now that we have the IntelliPro menu appearing, let's go through some of the options that are available to you. If you have a POTS line available, you can hook that into the RJ31X jack on the IntelliPro and use this as a separate means of dialing your central station. It will also show the intercept number as 555. Remember we require three tones for the IntelliPro to pick up. We also have AP report format. There are three different options. Modem, which you'll have to select Modem 2 or Modem 3. And then we also have Pulse. In our Quick Start Guide, we have all of the settings for a lot of alarm panel manufacturers. So please make sure to consult the Quick Start Guide for help with the Pulse settings. Our preferred format is Ademco CID. Next we have our AP input gain. This option increases or decreases the sensitivity of the 7794A to allow decoding of the data from the alarm panel. There are only two options with this, 10 or 20 dB. If one isn't working, I would suggest trying the other. The default is 20 dB. Intercept on blind dial is used when the alarm panel does not wait for a tone after going off hook to dial out. When selecting yes, the 7794 will expect to receive digits as soon as the alarm alarm panel goes off hook. The initial dial tone for off hook will not occur. Then we have our line cut report. The IntelliPro will send a trouble if the phone line is disconnected. Then we have our POTS cut report delay. This will delay the line cut report by the amount of time listed in the field. We also have our POTS restoral delay, which specifies the delay time before a message is sent, indicating that the POTS line has changed from a fault state to a functional state. The restoral message transmission is delayed by the number of seconds set to enable the phone line. The POTS restoral delay specifies the delay time before a message is sent indicating that the POTS line has changed from a fault state to a functional state. 
The restoral message transmission is delayed by the number of seconds set to ensure the phone line is stable. Then below that we have our AP account override. This is a very popular feature with our technicians. It allows you to overwrite the account ID in the fire panel programming with the subscriber ID that we put in our 7707. So if you do not have access to the fire panel programming, chances are you can still install an AES subscriber. Then we have our POTS input gain. This is 0, 10, or 20. And this increases the sensitivity of the 7794A The pot's input gain can be set at 10. The pot's input gain can be set at 0, 10, or 20. This increases the 7794A sensitivity when the 7794A is listening to activity on the phone line. The default value is 20 dB. Reducing this value will decrease the 7794A gain. Then we have a couple of different options under advanced options. So below that we have AP output gain. We have this set at 3 dB. The options are 0, 3, and 6. And the AP, the AP output gain sets the output gain when the 7794A is in POTS emulation mode. It is used to increase the gain of the dial tone as well as the handshake and kiss off tones sent by the 7794A to the alarm panel. Below that we have our line cut sensing option. This setting enables or disables the POTS line cut sensing. When set to yes, the line is monitored for cut interruption. Below that we have our CID 4XX letter. This is for reporting open and closed reports. It will either use a U or a C, so you can set whether you want to select a U or a C. Last but not least, we have our voltage pump. Our voltage pump set from yes to no, yes or no, is required only for alarm panel interfaces that have marginal communication quality working with the 7794. By default, this is selected as yes. And clock frequency shift is for advanced diagnostic purposes and not generally used. Whenever you're making changes to the IntelliPro though, it is very important that you hit Save Changes and then scroll to the top of the screen and update those changes to send them to the radio. If you want to default If you ever want to default an IntelliPro, what you can do is go to our Systems tab and then scroll down and you'll see where it says Reset to Default Configuration. If you select the flag here, it will reset the subscriber, excuse me. If you set the flag here, this will reset the IntelliPro to the default configuration. You can also do the subscriber at the same time, and this will reset all of the factory defaults. It does not get rid of the cipher code or the account ID. Hit reset configuration, and it will log us out so that it can fully restart. You'll see this message at the bottom of the screen so you know that your subscriber and IntelliPro have been defaulted.